So let's try something really different today. Let's tell you what this video is all about right at the start. What I'm going to tell you is how to save potentially thousands of pounds buying a home storage battery, a solar battery. Okay, so you've got your solar panels, you're thinking of getting solar panels, you're planning your electric car, it all makes sense. Generate your own electricity and use it for your hot water, your heating, your fuel for your car. It just makes sense. But Having a home storage battery, a solar battery, makes even more sense alongside solar because you're going to store all that electricity, the excess electricity that you're generating from your rooftop, and you're going to store it in the battery to use later at peak times or at night. So you can time shift the usage of energy. It also helps in winter. You can store cheaper electricity into your battery and then use it during the day at peak times too. So home storage batteries are better with solar. They make a better solution overall, but it's can you justify one? Can you afford one? They're really expensive. We hear it all the time. So how do you save thousands of pounds so that you don't have to spend as much money to have that perfect solution? Don't use as much electricity. Yeah, a bit obvious really, isn't it? But if you're not using as much electricity, you don't need such a large battery to store it in. This graph here is showing the results of some testing that I've been doing to see what difference it makes to the storage battery if I'm, well, let's say wasting some energy using more than I need to or saving some energy and using less energy, being more efficient. It's the blue area of this chart that we need to be concerned with that's showing the state of charge of the battery. The width of the area that's in blue is showing that I'm starting at 100% during the day when I've recharged the battery and overnight, how far down the line comes is showing how much of the percent of the battery we actually used. So on the left hand side the area is showing that you know sometimes in the morning I had 70 to 80 percent left over. Well that's plenty to last the day so this 4.8 kilowatt hour battery is plenty big enough. But then from the 2nd of May I start doing tests where I'm leaving devices on overnight that normally I would be turning off. And what we can see is I'm using more electricity overnight. And when I'm waking up in the morning, I've got less state of charge in the battery to use throughout the day. So if it's a dull day and I'm not recharging again, then I've got less battery to use during the day. So if I'm only left with 40% of the battery, it's 40% of a 4.8 kilowatt hour battery, you think, well, that's enough to last the day. But the first 20% I don't actually get access to because that depth of discharge isn't used to protect the life of the battery. So I've only got 20% left. That's probably not enough. So I would consider upgrading from 4.8 to 7.2 or 9.6 or whatever the next iteration of battery was. I might even consider a Powerwall 2 with 13 and a half kilowatt hours. But if you start being efficient again and you start turning things off overnight, using less electricity overnight, you've got enough state of charge left to last the rest of the day. So you don't need a bigger battery. I mean, how hard is it to turn a couple of switches off overnight? You could even have them on a timer, couldn't you? OK, so what did I actually do in my tests? Well, the first thing to say is the difference between the 30th of April, the 1st of May and 2nd of May was just the weather. On the 1st of May, we had better weather, so more sunshine. The solar power was providing the base load of the house for longer, and therefore we used less state of charge through the night. 30th of April and the 2nd of May, they had worse weather, so overnight we used more electricity and hence we had less state of charge left in the morning. 3rd of May, I actually turned the internet router off. Yes, yeah, shock horror, nothing online overnight. But the My Energy app, the Solar Edge inverter, the Solace inverter, everything catches up and refreshes overnight. And therefore, there's no harm whatsoever in turning your router off. It's only 20 or 30 watts being consumed, but over, let's say, 10 hours, that's 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a kilowatt hour, and it shows up as a good percentage loss on the state of charge the next day. On the 4th of May, I left a laptop still charging, still processing overnight, and that was using a maximum of 120 watts. A desktop computer, well, that'd be using a lot more energy overnight. And as you can see, it made another tangible difference to the amount of state of charge left. We're down to around 50% now, or getting close to 50% overnight. On the 5th of May, I turned the television off. Yeah, normally we'd put the television or soundbar and the Raspberry Pi that we have connected for our media to the television. All of that goes off 
onto standby. So it doesn't use a lot of electricity, but physically turning the switches off, that saves another 40, 50, 60, maybe even 70 watts continuously. So another, let's say half a kilowatt hour comfortably saved overnight. This I think is the contentious one because it's got my DVR connected there, the digital video recorder. So if I physically turn that off, it's not in standby, then it's not gonna wake up and record a television program for me. But these days, I don't actually watch live television very much. So I don't mind turning it off. And already we're down to what? 45% state of charge left overnight? And the last test on the sixth, I actually turned off the oven and the gazebo. So the main house oven for cooking, yep, that consumes between eight and 10 watts of electricity just in standby. So turning that over off overnight makes a difference as well. The gazebo, well, that's my outside room. So we have a separate consumer unit that I can actually flick the uh, consumer switch for that and turn it off. Unbelievably, without using any electricity, just having an outside socket in your garden or um, in your shed, etc., that's using another 8, 9, 10 watts of electricity. Over winter especially, we've got no need for that. And this is just a few devices being turned off. The more the devices, the more people in your household, the more opportunity you've got to save more energy. And then you don't need such a big battery. Let's be honest, when we're buying a home storage battery, what we're thinking about is powering our fridge, powering our freezer, powering important things that we know that has benefit to us. We're not actually thinking about spending thousands of pounds to power things that we can't be bothered turning off overnight. It just doesn't make sense. And the benefits don't end there because the less energy you use overnight, the less energy you need the next morning to recharge the battery. So the battery is charged faster, your hot water is heated quicker, more sunlight available for other things. Everything benefits from using less energy. Anyway, not the most visually pleasing video I know, but hopefully a useful topic and a useful test. As always, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed that. Really looking forward to when the lockdown's over and we can start doing some other videos, including some car test drives. The Mini EV and the new Ionic, they're definitely two that are on my list. Maybe the E2A and the eCourser too. Take care and see you again soon. Bye for now. Yeah.